2023 has not been off to a great start for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. While Spare has had supposedly strong sales, the book has turned Harry into a laughingstock, with even the likes of Jimmy Kimmel mocking him for revealing such strange, intimate details. But do not delay or your knob be destroyed, but mommy, have you heard about Sir Sigmund Freud? <laughs> The Netflix documentary from December 2022, documenting their once-in-a-lifetime love story, has resulted in massive drops to their popularity, not just in the UK, but in the US as well. The market Meghan hoped, dreamed, and honestly expected to flourish in. Her political aspirations are quickly slipping away, not to mention details coming out that Meghan was expecting Harry to be far richer than he turned out to be, only further displaying her over-obsession with money. The couple are now involved in a lawsuit initiated by Meghan's half-sister, Samantha, which risks revealing all the lies the pair have told over the last few years, with all the dignity of an Amber Heard cross-examination by my personal hero, Camille Vasquez. Meghan and Harry parody videos are all over social media, and to add insult to injury, they have been unceremoniously ousted from Frogmore Cottage, in favor of everyone's least favorite prince, no, not you, Prince Andrew. Now, all of this is bad enough, but the real cherry on top of these horrible months is this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's the worldwide privacy tour. Megan and Harry have been the subjects of a recent South Park episode, where, and there is no other word for this, the pair have been eviscerated. The characters in the show are not referred to by their names, of course. Instead, they are the prince and princess of Canada, with undeniable likeness to the pair. If you haven't seen the episode, you really should, because it is such a brutal takedown, and honestly, they've gotten details right that I would not expect, like their constant requests for privacy in the most public way possible. Yeah. <laughs> They show how the princess feels victimized every time she's being ignored. I don't care. Don't care. What did he just say? He victimized me. It's because I'm an ethnic woman. He can't do that. I'll see. Wait, you're ethnic? This is an outrage. We'll just see how he deals with my blue penis. And how the prince insists that they be left alone while rubbing his blue privates on one of the character's windows. Hey! Hey! Have some respect for people's privacy! Hey! In the show, the pair, of course, realize that the only way to solve their problems is to go back to the brand management firm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, is this you? Sorority girl, actress, influencer, victim. Yeah, that's totally me. But by the end of the episode, the prince comes to realize that maybe this is not the right path for the pair. That maybe they should do as they've always said and just live their private life. Hello? Dear God, if there is a singular moment that perfectly encapsulates Megan, it has to be this. And the episode ends with the sad prince realizing the truth and walking away. As a result of all these troubles, rumors now abound that Harry and Megan's relationship is on the rocks, with Megan feeling angry with Harry, blaming him and his actions for their massive fall in popularity and current status as butt of so many jokes. You're right, Megan, it's only Harry's fault. And I'm sure the couple are incandescent because they really can't take any action against South park since this is just a cartoon. The problem now is that it is the beginning of the end. While the mainstream left-leaning traditional American media has been generally very kind to Harry and Meghan, South Park and Jimmy Kimmel are sure to be the rocks that start the avalanche. Pretty soon, no doubt, there will be an SNL skit mocking the pair, reinforcing the fact that their brand is tanking faster than a 2022 Disney film, all because of one word, victim. 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 During the South Park episode, there are several references to how current brand management is heavily reliant on reframing celebrities who are rich, affluent figures as victims. We definitely saw this during COVID where the elites were so quick to tell us that they're in this with all of us while easily being able to jet set, hold maskless parties, and quarantine in large mansions. Now, I don't resent rich people for having their riches, but stop telling me you're a victim. You're fine. But constant showcasing of your undeniable victim status is the new fashion, as Meghan Markle enumerates so well. But what makes it a bad strategy? If you adopt the title of professional victim, it starts to change your relationship with yourself and with the world. You now start to think that things are happening to you. Instead of you viewing yourself as an active participant of your life, you are now the passive recipient of ill occurrences. The victim mentality reinforces your view of your own helplessness and bolsters the power that the big bad world has over you. We've all heard of rose-tinted glasses, referring to people who only see the best. Victim-colored glasses are the same, and it is absolutely absolutely within our control whether or not we choose to see ourselves that way. And it's this, it's our belief in the power of perspective that makes it so hard for people to buy into the ongoing stories of the professional 
victim. If you're a rare victim, sharing your voice, sharing your one-off story of a deep, dark struggle where you truly suffered, people will listen and people will care and people will offer their genuine sympathy. These stories serve as a cautionary tale for people full of important lessons we can all learn without having to experience it ourselves. In exchange, we come together to comfort the victim that had to live through it. But the constant victim is unbearable. No one is that out of control of their lives. And even if you are, at the end of the day, the general consensus is put your big girl panties on, learn to deal with your own problems, and get on with it. We all value the noble victim, the person that reluctantly shares their miseries, but doesn't let their miseries drown them, but instead empower them to never become a victim of their situation again. But the Meghan Markle use of her unending victim status is to garner a river of overflowing empathy and goodwill so she can avoid any form of accountability until the end of her days. She wants to use that status to continue to grow in her popularity, gain political power, as well as increase her bank balance substantially. I'm sure she saw visions of her greatest brand yet. Humanitarian, princess, senator. Victim. Well, South Park fittingly and brutally put an end to that dream. Didn't. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share, and don't forget to subscribe. Come on, you know you want to.